Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I'm going to um, spend this time, this lecture, uh, on solving certain problems related to cards, playing cards. Um, well, playing cards actually it's a great tool for combinatorics and, uh, uh, and theory of probabilities. So anyway, I have four different problems. Now this lecture is part of the whole course of advanced mathematics uh, presented on unizor.com and uh, what I suggest you to do is uh, just go to the website and try to solve these problems just yourself. Very important. And then listen to the lecture regardless whether uh, you will be able to solve it or not. Now the, the website contains obviously the, the problems themselves, the answers, short answers, so you can check your solution if you have one and then there is a full explanation, the whole solution. Um, so you can read afterwards uh, the, the solution which I'm presenting. Okay, so four problems and they are basically about more or less the same thing with just different numbers. Um, and again, that's uh, about playing cards. I will use these playing cards as a great tool. Now, um, the deck I'm talking about is the standard 52 cards deck. And uh, it has four different suits. Uh, it has clubs, diamonds, uh, hearts, and spades. So four suits. 13 cards each suit. So that's what we have. Now let's talk about the problems. The, pr the first problem is um, very easy. Um, you have to pick up six cards out of the deck of 52 cards. Six cards. And the requirement is they all should have exactly the same suit. So it's either six um, clubs or six hearts or whatever. So question is how many different sets of six cards or so how many different combinations of six cards um, all of that uh, all of which belong to the same suit uh, you can pick. Well this is a really a very simple problem and uh, to solve it you have to do basically two things. Number one you have to choose which suit you would like to be represented among these six cards. Now, how many different ways to choose one suit out of four? Well, it's number of combinations from four to one. Well, it's four actually. Um, now, uh, the next step is um, after you have chosen a particular suit, it means you have chosen a particular set of 13 cards, which the, the, the whole suit actually uh, consists of 13 cards in the deck, right? So now you have to pick 6 out of these 13. Now, with each suit, you can pick 6 cards out of 16, uh, out of 13, uh, the number of combinations of 6 out of 13 times, right? So basically, if you want, we can calculate it very easily. Now, uh, number of combinations from 4 to 1, well, this is actually 4 divided by 1, right? And the uh, number of combinations of uh, uh, 6 out of 13 is 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, I'm not going to count whatever these, uh, I, I'm not going to do all these, this arithmetic. I refer you to the site, unizor.com where in the notes for this lecture there is uh, uh, the calculated result of this. Okay, so this is a simple problem and this is a solution. Problem number two. Very slightly more complex. Exactly the same deck of card, exactly the same requirement to pick 6 out of 52, again, um, and in this case, my requirement is, well, the first problem was all of them should be the same, of the same suit. Now, all of them should be uh, 
no more than two suits. All right? So it can be one, but it can be two. For instance, it can be all clubs, or it can be clubs and diamonds, or it can be all hearts, or it can be spades and diamonds, whatever. But among these six cards, we should have no more than two different suits. Okay? That's the requirement. All right. So how can we approach it? Well, let's try to approach it in a similar manner to the previous task. I, uh, namely, what did I do first in the previous problem? First, I chose the suit, and then I chose uh, the cards from this chosen suit. Let me do the same thing. I know that the cards should belong to no more than two suits. So let's do first, let's choose two suits out of four. That can be done in this number of ways different. So it's four times three divided by one times two, which is actually six. So there are six different pairs of suits. Well, you can actually count it like uh, clubs and diamonds, clubs and hearts, clubs and spades. Okay, that's always clubs. Now, diamonds with uh, clubs already did, so it's hearts and diamonds and spades. And the last one is hearts and spades. So this us, these are all six combinations of two suits out of six. Fine, so I, I have chosen two suits, which means I have chosen 26 cards, right? 13 cards of each suit. So my next problem is to choose six cards out of these 26, right? So that can be done in this number of combinations, right? Number of combinations of 6 out of 26. Well, and it seems to be reasonable to just have the multiplication of these two numbers as the answer, right? First we chose the couple of suits, and then we chose 6 cards out of this chosen set of 26 cards. Well, not so fast. There is one little problem. Among these uh, combinations, which I pick from the 26 cards, among these six, you can have certain combinations which contain exactly two suits, like certain number of diamonds and certain number of clubs. And both numbers are greater than zero. Or you can have combinations where only one suit is represented, same as the, in the problem one, like all six clubs, for instance. Now, when I'm choosing six out of 26, obviously there are certain combinations which contain only one particular suit, one or another, right? Now let's think about it. You have, let's say, two different combinations of two suits, clubs and diamonds. Right? Now, you also have clubs and hearts combination. And you also have clubs and spades combination. Now, out of these 26 cards, I have been able to choose certain number of combinations which contain only uh, uh, clubs, right? But exactly the same combinations, which contain only clubs, I can choose from these two uh, suits, from these 26 cards. I count them separately, right? I'll just multiply it. Now, if I'm multiplying, basically everything, whatever is true for one pair of suits, is true for another. And unfortunately, I have counted my... Uh, combinations which contain all six clubs here and exactly the same combinations from here and exactly the same combinations from here. So it looks like the same combination of six clubs I have chosen from these 26, from these 26 and from these 26 so I counted it three times instead of one. And this, the, and this is true for any combination which contain only one single suit. Either it's combinations of, of, of clubs or, or, or diamonds or anything like this. So, any combination which contain only six cards of the same suit 
these, the, these particular combinations I counted three times. All other combinations which contain both suits represented among these six, I, I counted correctly once because it's the, the, the pair actually defines this type of combination. If both are present, then obviously any of these combinations which contain both suits is different from this one. But if, it's conta if it contains only one combination, then these three can be used to choose exactly the same six, six, six clubs, right? So I have to subtract from this twice, because I counted three times, so I have to subtract twice. I have to subtract twice the number of combinations which I luckily calculated for the previous problem the, the, the number of combinations which contain only one single suit. And this was C for 4 to 1, C 13 to 6. So this is a correct answer. This correction to my initial number was necessary because we had counted three times instead of once combinations which contain only single suit. And this is the number which we have calculated in the previous problem. So that's the answer. So we are gradually increasing the complexity of our problem. It's, uh, the second problem is very much like the first one. Instead of one suit, we just use two suits. But there is this very important nuance that we have counted three times something which we have to count only once. All right, let's go into a little bit more complex case. We have three suits to be represented among the six cards no more than three suits. So it can be all single suit or it can be two different suits or it can be three suits. So no more than three suits are represented among the six cards. Question is again how many combinations are there? Well, let's approach again the same way. First we can just start from picking uh, three particular suits out of four, which is four, three, two, one, two, three, which is four. Well, obviously it's the same as picking one suit, because picking three means you are leaving one aside. So there are three, uh, four combinations to leave one suit, so it's four combinations to pick three suits, right? That's kind of a symmetry. This is an obvious equality, because both of them equal to m plus n factorial divided by m factorial and m plus n minus n and, and n factorial, right? And same thing here. So both are the same. So that's why number of combinations from 4 by 3 is the same as from 4 by 1, which is 4. Okay, fine. So this is done. We have chosen three different suits, which means 39 cards. So next step is from 39 cards, we should pick 6. Okay, now we know that this thing has certain problem. Something we have counted twice or, or three times or whatever. So let's just think about, among these combinations, which I have picked, six, 6 cards, there are some combinations which contain all three suits, and these are fine, because no matter uh, which triplet of suits we have chosen, if my combination includes all three of them, then all of them are different, obviously, with different choices. So that's fine. Now let's consider separately, again, um, those combinations which contain only one suit out of the three chosen, or uh, only two suits out of the three chosen. All right? Okay. Now, um, the number of combinations with um, one suit. Okay, now let's say we have chosen uh, clubs, diamonds, and hearts. What other triplets are there these are, which contain clubs? right? So, clubs can be a member of three different um, combinations of suits. So, among 
these 39, I have chosen a certain number of combinations which contain only clubs. And exactly the same combinations I have chosen from these 39 cards and from these. So I have counted three times my single suit combinations. And I have to subtract, obviously, two of them out. So my first uh, subtraction is, I have to subtract two times number of combinations uh, of single suits. Okay, now let's talk about uh, combinations of six cards which contain exactly two uh, suits. Well. I have not calculated this number, but let's just think about it this way. Which combination contains, let's say, let's say, um, uh, clubs and diamonds. Now, what can be other variations of triplets? Well, it can be with hearts or it can be with spades, right? So we have two combinations of three suits where a pair is repeated. Well, obviously, if there are four suits, two I have fixed, then I have uh, picked the third one, either one or another from those which are remaining, right? So my pair is contained in two different triplets, which means that every combination which has exactly, not no more, but exactly two uh, suits is counted twice, and we have to subtract once out of this quantity. But I have not actually calculated the exact number of uh, combinations with uh, two suits. What I did, I have calculated the number of combinations with no more than two suits, and separately um, uh, the, the number of combinations with one. So if I will subtract from no more than two, I will subtract all, all those which are exactly one suit combinations, I will have the number of combinations which uh, have exactly two suits, right? So, let's just think about it. I subtract a difference between number of combinations which contain no more than two suits, which I have calculated in the previous problem, minus the combinations which are exactly one suit, which is this one. Equals two. Now this comes with minus. Now, minus and minus and minus. So these are the same. This is minus 3, right? So it's plus 3 minus 2 plus C41, C136. So that's the answer. So this is the number of combinations of no more than three suits, which means among these six cards can be either one or two, but no more than three representatives of uh, different suits. All right, so that's the answer to this problem for three suits. And by the way, if you want exactly three suits, we have to subtract this no more than three suits. We have to subtract from this number the, the number which we had in the previous problem number two, no more than two suits, right? If no more than three minus no more than two, I have exactly three suits, right? Okay. And the last problem would be, as I'm sure you have already guessed, four suits. Okay. Um, first of all, it doesn't uh, mean um, much to say no more than four suits, because um, there are only four suits, right? And uh, it doesn't mean much to say less than four suits, because less than four means three, and we have already covered this, right? Uh, so, right now we're talking about exact four 
uh, exactly four suits. So, how many different combinations of six cards exist with exactly all four suits represented? So, at least one card from each suit should be present among these six. And um, I'm going to solve this problem in two different ways. Um, I think it's very important, I told you many times before, that it's important to, to be able to solve the problem from two different approaches. Uh, and the most typical way is, the one approach is directly count what's necessary, and another approach count something which definitely does not belong to this category of necessary, but it's part of something common, and just subtract from one another. So, inclusion or exclusion, you can count what's included, or you can have a total count and subtract what's excluded from the rule. So in this case, let me just do it both ways. And by the way, in the previous case, I kind of alluded to the exclusion method. So I took the all um, number of combinations and subtract, I subtracted those which I have counted twice or thrice or something. Now, how can I directly count the number of six cards combinations which contain uh, all four suits, exactly four suits, so it's one card from each suit at least. Well, let's just think about it. If I have six cards, I have at least one club, at least one diamond, at least one card, and at least one spade, and I have two vacant places. Now, these two can belong either to the same suit, one of these, in which case I will have three cards of one suit, these two and one of these, and one card of the rest. So let's call it the combination three plus one plus one plus one. Six cards. So three cards of one suit and one card from each of the remaining suit. Or they can belong to two different suits, in which case I have some of them will be two, another will be two, and then one and one, also six. There are no other cases. There are no other ways to put something, some, some suit uh, belongness to, to these two, right? Either they're both the same or they're different, in which case we have either three, one, 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 or two, two, one, one combinations. So let's just count them separately and then add the results, right? That's reasonable. All right. Now, how many different combinations exist of this type? Well, obviously I have to choose one particular suit which contains three uh, cards and that can be done using this number of combinations. So I picked three uh, card suit, one particular suit. Now, from this particular suit, I have to pick, sorry, I have to pick one suit out of four. And this is the suit with three cards, right? And then, from this particular suit, I have to pick out of the 13 cards of this suit, I have to pick up three cards, right? Now, so I pick the large suit, and this is one out of four, and next, from this suit, I pick three cards. From all other suits, other three suits, each of them contains 13 cards, I have to pick one. It's multiplication, obviously. And this is basically the number of all the combinations of this type. Again, we pick the cards, uh, the suit actually, um, from which we will pick up three cards, which automatically picks the rest, obviously. And now I have four predetermined suits. One from which I have to pick up three cards, and others I have to pick one. Okay, now let's talk about the second case. 
I have to pick up two suits from which I will choose two cards each, right? So now my suits have, have been determined. One suit with two cards, another suit with two cards, and then one and one. Okay, so with two cards, from 13 cards of the first suit, I can do it this way. From the second one, this way. From the third, I have to pick only one card. And from the fourth, I have to pick only one card. And if I will add them up, I will get the result. That's my direct calculation. Again, I'm not doing all, all the calculations. The calculations are done on the website, unizor.com, among the notes. And uh, if you want, you can check your, your own calculations. Okay, this is the first method, the direct method. Now, let's try to do something similar to whatever I did before with the previous problems. Let's try to exclude something. But let's think about it. How many different combinations of six cards out of 52 we have? That how many? Now, how many of them we don't want? We don't want those combinations which contain no more than three suits, right? So all the combinations which have three or two or one suit, we don't want. We want only four, all four of them, all, all four suits represented. So we have to basically subtract the result of problem three, whatever the formula is. And here is an important thing, which I consider actually an achievement. If you do this, and if you will do all the calculations, down to the, you know, down to the numbers with the calculator, you will get exactly the same answer as I just did with, with the direct logic. So this is basically an ultimate test on whatever all these calculations are about, whether our logic is correct, whether we have subtracted, added, or whatever else we did. It's, it's very, very important to have some kind of assurance that whatever you did is correct. So the equality between this number and the one before was uh, 3 plus 1, 1, 1, or 2, 2, 1, 1. The equality between these numbers is basically assurance that all four problems are correct. Well, I wish you do it, you do it yourself. Just once more, just by yourself, forget about whatever I said in the lecture, try to remember it, try to remember the logic, go through the notes for unizor.com uh, uh, for this particular lecture, and, well, check out your, your answer with the calculator. It's very important to get it from, from the beginning to the end with this particular correction, checking whatever, it, whatever it's needed, and, uh, and get the right results. Well, um, by the way, if you really are comfortable with these four problems which I have presented today, then I'm pretty sure you're comfortable with combinatorics in general. But I will continue uh, solving certain problems. Now, this is the last lecture of the first part of the problems, then I will have the second part. And, uh, by the way, um, I just want to, to mention one more thing. This deck of 52 cards, it's extremely uh, uh, important tool for combinatorics. I said it before and I, I just love all these problems because we can just uh, calculate certain things related to the games like poker, bridge, etc. Um, and, uh, and that probably would be, you know, a very good exercise for, for an inquisitive mind. Um, well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.